So good afternoon, I am Dr. Nilanjan. I am a pediatric cardiac surgeon of uh, Narayana Super Speciality Hospital, Howrah. And today I have along with me the senior cardiac surgeon, Dr. Devashish Das, who also works with me in the same hospital, Narayana Super Speciality in Howrah. So uh, Dr. Devashish, uh, uh, I think we have been shaken off late by the cataclysmic turn of events of COVID-19. And there was a time in the early part of this year when we had witnessed the strictest of the like lockdown ever in the history of mankind. So from that point uh, onwards, you and your team had not only started or restarted the program, but also they recuperated and also they struck some kind of a semblance to the normalcy. So I shall be asking you some tips and tricks of sure. the journey which have been traversed by you. So according to you, uh, how are you screening your patients or uh, According to you, what are, your, what are the optimum tests which you are doing to rule out the COVID disease before you undertake any kind of a surgery? Right. Thanks, Nilanjan. I think uh, like every other unit, uh, we also went through a period of almost sort of uh, zero activity in the early part of April. Then we kind of opened up and started resuming normalcy for work. And the protocol that we are following is pretty standard is what we are doing is every patient who gets admitted for a procedure gets an RT-PCR for COVID tested. For children, we are testing one of the parents who is staying with the child also. So both of them get RT-PCR for COVID from the outpatient. Uh, this has to be within seven days of the test and then we admit them with a negative test which is done within the seven days. If any patient stays in hospital or develops some other symptoms during the stay before the operation, we retest them again. Or if the duration exceeds seven days, we again get a true nut one or two days prior to surgery just to be sure that at that point of time, the patient is negative. In spite of this, I know the sensitivity is around 60-70%. So there will be some patients who probably miss this net. But it is still, uh, so far it has worked for us. So universal uh, RT-PCR for all patients and one, one parent for patients who are undergoing procedure in our unit for both adult as well as pediatric is what we are doing. So what is your idea about the CT thorax are you doing? So CT thorax especially in children because the bulk of uh, the work that we do in cardiac surgery in our unit is pediatric. It is according to the evidence uh, CT for children is uh, has not got a very good yield. So we are not doing it unless and until the patient has specific respiratory symptoms. Uh, in adult, yes, we have kept a lower threshold. If a patient has uh, tested positive, has recovered and then has come to us for a procedure now, just to evaluate the lungs, we would do a screening uh, CT for them, but not for children. That's what we are So doing. what if, if uh, a patient turns positive during the stay of the hospital, then what is the protocol you were following? So uh, we had this incident in one of our uh, neonate actually a few days old who underwent an arterial switch and was doing well when in the fourth or fifth day, you will probably remember this patient had some respiratory symptoms and tested positive. So what we have decided that we immediately isolate the patient to a separate uh, critical care area. Uh, and then we start the treatment for COVID as per protocol, including whatever level of respiratory support the patient needs. Usually these will be post-operative patients, so they might require an advanced level of respiratory support. In addition to that, we screen the contacts and whoever comes uh, as a caregiver for the patient takes all precautions wearing a full PPE to take care of the patient till the patient meets an eventuality. So that is what we are uh, following. Uh, and in the post-operative period, if any patient suddenly develops symptoms of mainly the respiratory kind, which is out of proportion to any of his uh, diagnosis, we keep a very low threshold for testing them for RT-PCR. So far, only one patient has actually tested positive in the post-operative period. And you are testing all the pediatric patients with their parents? Yes, all the pediatric patients with the mother who is a caregiver are tested for. for. Now, a difficult as well as a, a touchy situation is suppose a neonate is born and he needs any kind of a the neonatal surgery, maybe in the form of an arterial switch or other TA, PVC or whatever. And if the mother was also positive during the time of the pregnancy, then how you are dealing with that situation? So basically, currently there is no evidence that there is any transplacental yes. transmission of COVID-19. So if the mother is positive and uh, the child is born who requires say an emergency or an urgent procedure, within first few days of birth or few weeks, uh, we would test the child obviously. If the child is negative, we would just go ahead and operate. 
uh, if the child unfortunately tests positive, then depending on the situation, if the patient still requires an emergent procedure, obviously we would operate on that kid with all precautions. Uh, so, we have had experiences of uh, patients coming to us with a dire emergency in which we did not have the luxury to wait for the test results. So, we went ahead with universal precautions and operated the child. The child was thankfully negative for us, but in a situation like that where the mother is, because the mother will not come into contact with the child for a foreseeable future when the child recovers. So, unless the mother tests negative, she will not be allowed near the child, but we would go ahead and treat the child. Uh, as an emergent procedure, taking all precautions and presuming that the kid is positive or if we can document that the kid is negative, we would proceed. Chances of transplacental transmission are very rare for COVID-19. And can asymptomatic children transmit the virus? Uh, yes, I mean asymptomatic children, asymptomatic adults, every asymptomatic individual, there is enough evidence now that they can be carriers and they can transmit the disease. So, it's not that uh, the patient who is asymptomatic and is positive will not transmit. It does happen. So, we have to be extremely careful. And that. have you experienced any such cases where the child has turned positive after the operation? Yes. And did it have any kind of an impact on the post-operative outcome? Yes. So, I think because it is a virus which affects your respiratory symptom, we have had one occasion where a child who was making good progress in the post-operative period tested positive require an advanced level of respiratory support and ultimately succumb to it. So, it does happen. So, because it will affect the lungs, uh, we cannot escape it and uh, there is only a limit to which you can escalate respiratory support, but uh, they will have an impact on your post-operative outcomes if the patient tests positive. So, that has been our experience so far. And what is your overall experience? during this COVID pandemic? So, we started as I said, we it, during the month of April, we went through a phase of very low activity and then we started in the middle of May. After that, the volume of the work gradually picked up. We have been taking all precautions. Few of our healthcare workers did test positive, but mostly they have all been asymptomatic and have recovered and have joined back work. In addition to that, we did get a lot of young children, young infants, neonates, lot of emergency surgeries during this period. We did some of the most complex operations during this time and during this time one of our heart failure patients who were listed for a transplant actually ended up getting a heart transplant in our unit who which was the first pediatric transplant of Eastern India. This was a 17 year old girl who ended up getting a heart transplant and recovered. So, we screened the patient as well as the donor for COVID taking all precautions for COVID. We uh, did the heart transplant and the patient recovered without any issues and is doing well so far. So, in addition to all complex uh, neonatal surgeries, uh, other adult cardiac surgeries as well as a heart transplant, we have done it all during this period. The volume is probably slightly lower than what we are used to, but the complexity is more and so far uh, we have had uh, no major bad experiences from following the pro protocol that we are currently following. So, it was wonderful talking to you, Dr. Devashish and particularly the importance of this talk was this was uh, the specifically pertinent for the pediatric cardiac surgery and the COVID situation of the patient because most of the time in our in our countries uh, during the time of this pandemic, the pediatric patients or the children have become a silent bystanders and they have become uh, uh, they have become a, a sort of uh, the prey to this COVID disease and many patients have died because they could not uh, they could not afford the operation or they could not reach the hospital in the proper time. So, again, Dr. Devash, is wonderful talking to Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.